Good afternoon. And welcome. This is a great turnout. So nice to see you all here. I uh, called the meeting, 2023 uh, annual meeting of the members to order. I'll ask our secretary, Bill Burnett, to talk about notice and establishment of a quorum. Okay. Thank you and good evening. We have received, through proper notification of the membership, enough members to make this a quorum, and therefore the meeting is official. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, at this time, I'd like to hear a motion to approve the minutes of the February 23rd, 2022 meeting. Is a motion by Betsy Gallo. Is there a second? Second by Janet uh, Barry. Are there any changes, corrections, or anything? If you remember that, you, you probably don't belong here, but, uh, <laughs> okay. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Uh, approval of the August 25th, 2022 meet minutes. If we don't have Terry Barry moving something, that's gonna be an unusual meeting. So I'm gonna say Terry Barry has moved the approval. Is there a second? A second over here, Janet? Uh, Barbara, okay. Um, all those, in, any, any questions, any corrections? Okay. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're gonna do a brief um, update on renovations. I'm sure everybody had an easy time finding a parking place today, so as you know, we are well underway. There may be times, uh, especially if you're a little bit OCD as I am, um, when you look out and you say, why isn't anything happening? Well, you'd be amazed at what is happening. Uh, at this point in time, we are in the early stages of construction, and Tim is gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. You really can't see much of it other than the parking disruption, but there is stuff going on. So, Tim? Thank you. Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on behind the scenes, um, so I wanted to explain that to you. Uh, we closed the Bistro and Pool a week ago Monday, and since that time, they've been going through the process, what they call cut, cap, and secure, which is basically where they secure all the utilities. So for us, we have a unique challenge in that we still have the restaurant open upstairs, the main kitchen. So when they cut, cap, and make safe, the, the different utilities like propane, water, electric, and those different areas, um, they have to do it in a way that keeps upstairs running. So this was, we knew that this was gonna be a challenge and we're working our way through it. We're still on time and still on budget. I can add to about some of the differences. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to mention was, um, you know, we've lived through this before. Uh, for those that were here in 2013 into 2014, uh, we had, uh, certainly had our challenges at that time. And it was a great opportunity to learn a lot of what we could improve going forward. So I want to kind of highlight some of those differences in this renovation versus what we experienced in 2013 and 14. Uh, one is the timing of the project. When we went into the last renovation, we didn't have all of our permits secure. We have all of the permitting in place to proceed with the renovation. That is a big difference and one that we keep hearing from our owners, rep, and architects that makes all the difference because other projects that are running behind are having permitting issues. So we don't have that issue this time around. The other is we're working with an owner's rep, uh, Jeff Nunner, and you all have probably seen him at some of the meetings and town halls. We've been working with him now for over two years. So he's been involved in the plans that have been put together. Um, so we have a, a, a better set of eyes earlier on in the project to ensure that things go smoothly, as well as holding the architect and contractors accountable. So from a construction standpoint, different animal than last time, and from an operational standpoint, it's a huge difference. You remember when we opened after the last renovation, if you were here, we essentially started over with all new food and beverage staff. I think it was the chef is the only person we had that, that stayed on. We tried to bring the staff back, but because of the delays in the renovation, we started with a whole new staff. 
Um, we also went from one kitchen to two kitchens. And that was a challenge, as those of you that were here experienced, as, as did I. And after that, we ended up bringing in the H2B program. Um, so now we have that going forward. So when we open uh, later this year, we will have the same staff that you see today. The seasonal staff will come back, the H2B staff. So we will be fully staffed, as well as bringing some additional hands on deck because the bistro is going to be uh, bigger, obviously. So that is another big difference. You know, upstairs is open all the way through, so we're able to keep all of our employees employed. That is a big deal. Uh, same thing with Mark and his crew. Mark's crew is going to work under the general contractor, so we're not going to lose any of that staff. So it's from an operational standpoint, I, I can tell you, I'm really looking forward to the end of this year when we get this project done because we're going to be in a great position to open up and have you all enjoy the new facilities. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I'd like to call on Dave Harper, our treasurer, to give the treasurer's report. Good afternoon. Is it evening? It's still afternoon. Um, before I get started in my treasurer's report, um, we have two distinguished guests here that um, I want to introduce, and then I would ask uh, Phil to come up. But uh, we have Phil Newman, uh, who is the partner uh, with RSM, um, and he's our engagement partner, and he will be giving our audit report. Uh, and we also have Kaylee Huber here, who is the audit su supervisor. Um, so she did a lot of the work for <laughs> Phil, all of the work, and Phil just nodded. Um, but Phil has been um, our audit partner for ever, ever since I've been uh, involved with the Finance Committee and is more than 30 years, well, this was last year, so it's more than 31 years now, uh, experience in public accounting, as, uh, and he's also, um, we're fortunate that he's our audit partner, but he is also the National Institute uh, Industry Leader for RSM's private club practice. So he knows uh, a lot about private clubs. Um, and he also is a um, frequent speaker at, at regional and national conferences and a regular contributor to industry publications. So you can see his full uh, bio there on the screen. Um, so I will shut up and I will ask uh, Mr. Newman if he would come up and uh, present the, the audit report. It, is everybody able to hear? Is the sound system working okay? Why, did you want to turn it off because I was speaking? <laughs> I've been here before. I know, I, I know what you guys get up to. So um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be back here. I was saying to my colleague, Kaylee, all my credibility was immediately, immediately out the window when I see how long ago that uh, a bio picture was taken. But um, I refuse to change it. I refuse to change it. Um, yeah, I'm very glad. This is Kaylee's first annual meeting ever attending, so um, you will never forget where you were, Stonebridge, the man's toilet isn't working, uh, but, but the project is on budget and on time. So, so um, uh, but it, it reminded me, Dave, looking up here, how fortunate we all are. You got four ladies on your board, and it just hit me up. We just don't see that that often, so, um, so I'm very glad to say that, uh, that that's the case here. Thank you. Um, so just, just hit some of the highlights with, with regards to the audit report. It's a clean, unmodified opinion. Uh, you have new controller this year. We knew Donna from her previous, um, uh, previous club, and uh, Kelly had worked with her, and uh, we're happy that you know, we got through, the, got through the process, and you got your uh, financial statements issued with a clean, unmodified opinion. Um, I know Dave's going to go over um, you know, some, of, uh, some of the highlights of uh, some of the movements on your balance sheet and your income statement. So I'm not going to repeat all of that. But um, I think certainly when we look at your balance sheet, 
The important thing is the bottom, bottom line. It's the fund balance, the members' equity, whatever you want to call it. And that continues to improve. It went up by almost 15% last year as you guys continue to reinvest in your facility. And obviously, that's what's going on with the amenity. I can tell you that um, if you don't know us, if you haven't heard um, about RSM within Florida, we work with about 200 private clubs. Uh, some of them are structured like yourselves. A lot of them um, are structured like yourselves. We, Kaylee and I are both out of the Naples office here. Um, but I'll tell you that neither COVID, neither inflation, neither a war in Europe has slowed down the reinvestment in club communities in, in uh, Florida, and particularly in South Florida. Um, you know, there's still a strong impotence, as you all know, people still want to come here. They still, and especially, we both live here, so we went through Ian like a lot of you guys did as well. And, and, and certainly, you know, the demand for quality amenities hasn't backed off anytime soon, and hasn't backed off. And, you know, we see no, uh, no signs of that either uh, when we're going around our club communities. Um, people are continuing to move forward with uh, with their projects, and um, you know certainly applaud you guys for for doing that uh, that as well. Um, <clears throat> the other thing from the audit report, we had no internal control issues, which is something. If I was sitting in your chair, I would very much uh, very much want to know. If you do look at your balance sheet um, from the end of uh, fiscal 2022, you will see at about five hundred and ten thousand uh, dollar receivable. Uh, from uh, from Uncle Sam for the employee retention credit for all the the good and right decisions that you guys all made back in the dark days where you kept people employed so you were able to get a payroll tax credit and uh, you actually got that money in January uh, Tim after the fiscal year end had closed so that money um, did come in so that's again very very positive um, <clears throat> industry trends and challenges and and some of this is. I may have said it last year, um, but but we're certainly still continuing to deal with you know some some tremendous pressures um, that I think in this area get mag magnified. Um, certainly, trying to get people to work in hospitality uh, to come back after COVID continues to be a challenge. It was a big challenge before COVID hit, um, and certainly now that our facilities are, are are back and reopening, which is something you can see if you look at your financials. I think the fact that you you drank 37% more than you did the year before is, is it's, it's borderline a problem actually, but, um, but, but we'll, 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 we'll give you that. We always like, you know, it's, it's a sign, the food and beverage numbers were tremendous. It's a sign of people wanting to use the club and obviously with all the changes that are going on, um, you know, I'm sure you're gonna wanna, you know, use it even, uh, even more. Um, but just don't forget guys, you know, it's easy, we all, are, get frustrated easily these days. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you guys have those challenges as well. But with the staff, you know, the impact of Hurricane Ian on the people that work at our clubs probably hit them as much, if not harder, than, than so many people. Um, there's, a, there's a rental market index. It's put together by um, Florida Atlantic University, FGCU, and I think Florida International, and one of the universities in Alabama. And they rank rental markets across the country nationally. Um, and how much they're overpriced. So they have a measure of where it should be priced. The number one overpriced market in the country, Cape Coral. Cape Coral, okay. Uh, the rents were up 15, per, and, and that includes Miami, New York City, you know, all those big metropol uh, metropolises. 15% um, word of an awful lot of the people that work at our clubs live, you know, that neck of the woods and obviously the broader area. So. So, you know, certainly big challenges there. The H2B program that, uh, that Tim mentioned, thankfully, um, that's continued to be supported up in DC. Um, we're always worried industry-wide that they'll tinker with that and, and cap that. Um, so it's good to know that, um, that they, uh, they haven't done that. Um, but our commodity prices continue to go up. You know, we're seeing numbers, obviously, with regards to CPI. And we're looking at the stock market. It doesn't know what to do with CPI right now, right? Um, the Federal Reserve, who knows? Um, but we sometimes forget, and, and it was, there was some article, I think it was about two weeks ago, the Wall Street Journal published an article of, forget about CPI, what about the actual price of milk, eggs, chickens? And they had a graph of that compared to CPI and all those things that obviously we all use at home and we all use a lot in our club, um, have gone up you know, significantly um, at a greater rate than CPI. So again, 
you know, some challenges coming through there, um, and we just, you know, we're all in it together, which means, you know, focus on your culture. Focus on the culture of your club, how you work with each other, how you work with your staff, especially, um, because I think what it's going to come down to is people are going to want to work here because of you guys and because you treat them well. Um, you're going to be competitive with salaries and wages, but ultimately it's going to be how people uh, are rem uh, remember what the, what the work experience is like here, and you want them to become net promoters of your club as much as you are net promoters for other people to want to want to be uh, members here. But um, you know, Tim, a lot of your colleagues, when I've given similar remarks at other annual meetings, are saying, "Well, Phil, sounds like you know you're telling me the audit fees heavily connected to the price of payroll. It's actually more heavily connected for me to the price of potatoes. So <laughs> the price of potatoes went up 91 percent, Tim." In 2022, so um, we'll have that conversation. Uh, we'll have that conversation off offline. But um, <clears throat> better than the price of eggs. That is that is true. But um, but potatoes. They make booze from potatoes as well. Anyway, uh, that's a side. But um, guys, you've you've got a great financial position. You're going into a major project. You're in a major project. Um, you've got a lot of consistency in your management team. Um, which is something that uh, a lot of other clubs, I can tell you, uh, will look at with envy. Um, because when turnover happens now, it's very, very difficult to, to get people in. So, <clears throat> But um, from your board and your finance committee's perspective, you should know that the finance committee is very robust. We spend a lot of time talking to them, not only at the end of the year as part of the audit, but certainly Dave and I have conversations throughout the year. So. Um, so I think everybody's certainly got the best interests of the club and the financial position um, uh, in heart as far as as far as our dealings with them. So it's a pleasure to work with you, Dave. I think this is your last board meeting. You look so happy; it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with that, I'm going to conclude my prepared remarks and kick it back to your treasurer. Thank you very much. All right, he, he said it all, so that should conclude uh, my part of it, right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so for those of you who are in the audience who um, their, your eyes glaze over when you start looking at numbers and balance sheet and income statement, um, if, if they haven't uh, already started glazing over, then you may want to take a nap for the next 15 minutes. And, you, uh, I won't be offended, uh, but if you snore, I will be offended. So, um, so let's uh, talk about the balance sheet because uh, Phil just sort of um, uh, put the right emphasis on it because that is our uh, that is our main uh, lifeblood, uh, the balance sheet. Uh, if you see up on the slides, uh, I put some of the major components of the balance sheet up there, not the whole thing. Um, but as you can, as you can see, uh, the, the, the change from year to year, uh, 2022 is our last fiscal year. That's what um, uh, RSM just completed their audit on. Uh, the two major things are cash, the liquid assets, both the operating cash and the reserves uh, that we have. Total about 5.6 million, uh, and they're split about 50-50, 2.8 two million for cash, op operating cash, and 2.8 for reserves. And you can see the operating cash has increased since uh, 21 by about a half a million. Uh, the, the reserves have stayed about stable. Now, every one of these arrows that you see in here is going in the right direction. So as I talk through them, you'll see, uh, I'll explain why they're going in the right direction, and that's a good thing. Uh, but the reserves, uh, are level, even though they're the same as they were last year, because we, again, we dedicated $2 million of our master reserve account for the new project. So some of that had been spent by the end of the fiscal year. Uh, so that's why that has stayed level, even though we've uh, replenished that uh, during the year. So the property and equipment, what you're sitting in, uh, this is the main uh, piece of property, plant, and equipment, uh, and then in everything in the common areas that surround it. Um, each year that should go down, uh, and the reason it should go down is depreciation. Um, th that's, uh, that's something that, 
uh, until we put the new uh, facilities in place from the renovation, that number will continue to go down next year. Uh, then in 24, you'll see that uh, jump when we put the new facilities into, um, uh, into use. Uh, so that's going in the right direction. Total debt is going in the right direction. How does that reduce? That reduces because we've been paying down the debt. Uh, and at the uh, end of, I forget when it was August or September, we paid off the debt. Uh, so that debt that we had with Fine Art, Fine Mart Bank was gone and we needed to uh, resolve that before we went into any new loans with Bank of America. Net assets, uh, net assets will continue to increase as asset growth outpaces liabilities. So that's, uh, as uh, Phil said, that's one of the main issues that we need to keep an eye on and, and uh, every year it's been going in the right direction. So let's jump to the operating statement. The operating statement uh, is your revenues and expenses. Uh, each, each year they've been going up. Um, again, CPI, as Phil talked about, is a main contributor to that, but the revenues went up 16%, but the operating expenses went up 17%. Um, inflation had a lot to do with that. Um, cost of chickens, cost of eggs, uh, has gone up at a significantly greater uh, pace than was anticipated. Uh, so that generated for us a uh, approximately $100,000 loss for the year. Um, but not to fear, because when uh, the documents basically say if we have an operating loss, then there's an assessment. Well, I can tell you the board has made the decision there is not an assessment this year, and it's mainly due to the fact that, as Phil said, we received about a half a million dollars of additional money through the ERC, or the Employee Retention Credit. And he spoke a little bit about that. Uh, so we've applied 100,000 of that to this uh, 22 fiscal year um, to um, eliminate any need for an assessment to the members. So even though you see that 99,000 sitting down there, it's really zero. Um, so the next slide uh, is just the contributing factors or the contributing highlights that uh, drive the operating statement, and that's the two things that um, that we have here, golf and food and beverage. Um, golf rounds were at another record high. Uh, we had a record high, I think, last year, Tim, uh, in 21. Now we've got a new record. Um, and those are up 5% from what they were at the record last year. Um, in terms of golf revenue, the golf revenue is up 22%, and that's again driven mainly by the number of golf rounds. Uh, food and beverage is up 50%, but don't let that fool you because if you look at the 19 or at the 2019 year, that budget of 1.7 was about what it was the year before COVID. So we're kind of catching up uh, to um, uh, with food and beverage. Um, so, next slide, we can't really just talk about the fiscal 22 financials, uh, financial results without talking about the work that's been done uh, and put in place for the financing and the funding of the new uh, future renovations. So the Finance Committee and management have spent a great deal of time uh, putting this financing in place. And just as a recap, I've put it up here on, a, on one slide so you can see uh, this may be repetitive for some, and some maybe have just seen it for the first time, but the project cost, again, that was all voted on and approved by the members, you, uh, $16 million. It includes all of the costs that should be included in their construction, soft costs, equipment, financing costs, and contingencies all wrapped in one. That's the $16 million of cost of this project. The funding for this comes from three sources. The first is the Master Reserve Fund that we said we 
set aside $2 million of that. Uh, the bank financing through the Bank of America includes two loans. Both are 12-year loans, 12-year terms. One has a construction loan, uh, then it converts to a term loan, and it's again for a 12-year period at about 4.5%. And the other is a 12-year term loan at about 5%. So the combination of the two million reserves and the two loans of 14 million, that's how we get to the financing and the funding for the $16 million of cost. Uh, we did a lot of work with those banks. Uh, we spent a tremendous amount of time with them. I think Tim, there were 13 or 14 banks we talked to. Um, so between Howard and myself and Tim, um, that consumed a lot of time, but uh, I think we got to the right partner for us in this, uh, in this uh, financing. They've been very uh, good to work with. So in summary, uh, Stonebridge operations and our balance sheet are financially strong and stable. The management and the board continues to instill the fiscal discipline to maintain our club's strong and healthy financial position, and we are well positioned for the future. So, with that, I will just say I want to thank and recognize the Finance Committee members for their dedication and hard work. We are fortunate, very fortunate, to have the strong financial talent uh, on, our on our club's uh, Finance Committee. They are awesome. Um, it has uh, been an honor and a privilege to serve uh, at, on the board as your treasurer for the past three years. It has been a pleasure um, to work closely with Tim and Donna and the other talented management team that we have here. And I will particularly miss working with this very talented board. Um, it, it, the the, the um, contributions that come from the talent uh, is, is just amazing. But what I won't miss is all the emails. So... <laughs> With that, boom. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just want to say that Dave and the Finance Committee are worth every penny we paid them. Again, thank you all for coming. I know this meeting lacks the drama of a hotly contested election, but candidly, we try to avoid those as much as we can. But your attendance marks you as among the very small percentage of members who take an interest in how the club is run. So I, I'm really glad that we have the opportunity to talk to you tonight. I think it may mean, and I take it to mean, when the small number of people who actually come out, and I thought it was going to be even smaller than this, but I'm impressed. But I think that means people are happy, or at least people are trusting that we're doing the right thing. I hope that's what it means, um, but we would very much like to get our message out to as many people as possible about the work that's going on here. So I stand here um, five years since my last uh, president's report, uh, oddly the same date. Uh, it was nice to have a break, but it's surprising how little has changed. You may recall that in that report, I described the awful effect that being president had had on my golf handicap, and I showed a chart that showed <laughs> where it started at the beginning of the year. At, at It was 10. I, was, I thought I might almost get to my goal of a single-digit handicap, never made it. But then it went all the way up to uh, 16. Well, as you can see today, it really hasn't adjusted much in my favor. So uh, it, it really is not much of an improvement, but um, I think I may have to get used to that 15 handicap. Another thing that was part of my presentation back then was a quote from Charles Dickens that said it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And I don't, I'm not sure I would say that this year, um, the, there were different times, there's no question about it, but I don't know that we had the best and the worst. Some of the bad times, we started the year with a COVID scare after Christmas dinner dance. 
Um, that reminded us that COVID was still a problem. The world got scary. And another storm brought fear close to our home. But there were better times. Things got better. As this list shows, we revised our renovation plans. Our members overwhelmingly approved that. We found attractive financing rates, as Dave pointed out. We negotiated contracts within budget. And as Tim proudly points out, we're still within budget, having started construction a week ago. Um, we, we negotiated uh, contracts with a substantial contingency. And that's very important to know. We, we, this $16 million we approved had a big contingency. And a lot of the credit for that goes to Dave and Howard, who were adamant that we needed to build in that contingency. But it was a contingency because we were still worried about supply chain issues and things like that and where would the prices would turn out. As it turned out, the prices came in where we had hoped. And we kept members informed every step of the way. I think there were even better times. Uh, we survived the hurricane. We dusted ourselves off and cleaned up and we merged undaunted from that. Um, and we contributed over $80,000 to help our staff who had been impacted. In addition, in addition, the work of this board was, was incredible, truly incredible. Um, I think people who have come to board meetings have remarked on how amazed they are at the amount of work that goes on at the committee level. Uh, when the committee reports are given. And committee goals and accomplishments, that is the committee goals for next year and committee accomplishments for this year are going to be listed when this uh, gets posted on the website, the um, wrap up of this meeting gets posted there. So you'll be able to see them and I recommend you take a look because it's impressive. So the path forward. We can expect a challenging nine months. The parking effort today is just a good example of that. Our little slice of paradise will be plagued with noise and dust. We will be inconvenienced in a number of ways. You can help. We need your cooperation. We need you to be patient, kind, and careful. I want to emphasize careful. There's going to be a lot traffic, construction vehicles, construction workers, please consider, we remind people all the time, please consider walking on the sidewalks and not in the street. Uh, there are very narrow roads here, a lot of traffic, it's, it's going to be dangerous. Around the construction site, it will be fenced off, but please stay away, don't try and peek and see what's going on, uh, just be careful. And as I said, if you can be patient and kind as well, it will all be worth it in the end. The plan is that I will continue as president until next year's annual meeting, so you're gonna have to put up with me again. Um, it's my sincere hope that I can stand here and report that the members continue to enjoy our greatly improved bistro and golf course, and that the work was done on time and on budget even then. I want to thank a list of people, it's long. I apologize for anyone I have missed. Dot, for your love and support, which always makes me look good. Sandy Fleming, who has unselfishly served this community on the board for six years. It's kind of almost like a sentence uh, in a way. <laughs> Dave Harper, who guided us through the complex financing we needed for the renovations while protecting our financial help health, Kathy Deedy, a vice president to whom I could and did delegate important projects, knowing they would be handled competently and with grace. To all my fellow board members, for your patience, your understanding, your time, your wisdom, and your sense of humor, but especially for your willingness to serve. To the many, many Ian heroes, our members and our staff, to all of our staff, especially Tim Jones, who we will celebrate tonight for his 25 years in, at Stonebridge. 
that's pretty much a life sentence. <laughs> And to, to you, our members, while I have heard some criticism of our decisions, I have tried to listen and, if appropriate, to explain. But especially in the last few months, I have received many, many thanks from members, and I have enjoyed many good times with members. And that is the best compensation one can get. So thank you to all of you. And now, Now I'd like to call on Kathy Taylor for the Tom Brooks Outstanding Volunteer Award. You don't want any injuries. Oh, I'm trying, yeah. trying not to. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kathy Taylor. Um, I have been given the great honor of being able to be on a committee that every year chooses a, a recipient for the Thomas L. Brooks Outstanding Volunteer of the Year Award. Each year the board is tasked with recognizing a member who goes above and beyond the concept of give back to Stonebridge. And each year the community produces numerous candidates who fit this category by volunteering their time and efforts toward fulfilling our mission statement, our mission statement to be the friendliest country club community in Southwest Florida, providing a beautiful setting of relaxed elegance and unsurpassed value. And the volunteers who come forward each year do a fantastic job of upholding that mission statement. It usually is given to the Volunteer of the Year Award. This year, however, our award could more aptly be titled Volunteers of the Half Century Award. As the two ladies that I'm about to recognize have shared their time and talents with us for over five years. So it is really with a great deal of pleasure that I announce this year's award recipients, Dee Bozich and Lisa Zimmerly. <laughs> Dee. <laughs> and I don't think Lisa's here. And I don't think Lisa's here. I tried, I tried so hard to get Lisa here, but I don't see her. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we'll, I'll, we'll give her a copy of this, okay? No, I'm not finished yet. Oh, no. Wait. S sorry. I need to sit a minute, Dee. Sit. It's only another half hour. That's right. I mean, you know, to the, but the priest at our church said, always make it brief, so I'm going to make it brief. But I have to tell you what these two ladies have done. Dee and Lisa have been the creative and concept designers behind the Halloween party, the fashion show, and the art show for the past five-plus years. Lisa has compiled a warehouse, or garage, full of Halloween decoration that she shares with all of us each year. And each year, her passion and creativity are amazing. Whether it's creating an eerie haunted house, homemade jail cells, or a pirate ship, her desire to create an authentic Halloween environment are enjoyed by the many of us who love Halloween. Dee brings her talent as a theatrical producer to create a fashion show that is one of the largest attended events each year. The amount of work she puts into this affair is mind boggling. I got to witness it firsthand this year when I was involved. Totally amazing. She creates the theme, she writes a script, she works with the models and actors and coordinates with management to each year turn this dining room into a venue that delights and entertains 200 plus ladies. Whether it's having Mrs. Doubtfire and Tootsie come for a visit, a day at Downton Abbey with Mr. Carson and Mrs. Patmore, or a magical trip to a secret garden where this year, Stonebridge's newest baby gnome, <laughs> little Jackson Wilson, our Amy's little guy, made a cameo appearance. So Lisa each year 
um, excuse me, each year D becomes our own Cecil B. DeMille. And with Lisa's creative abilities, the sets and the costumes that she produces are every bit as professional as local theater productions. Then there's the annual art show. With Dee's organization and skills and production and Lisa's creative expertise, they have created an art show to effectively showcase the many talents of our Stonebridge members. And as further testament to their skills, talents, and passion for Stonebridge, they always rally the best of the best to be on their committees who play an integral part in carrying out their concepts. Their passion is infectious, and all those that participate in these productions are urged on by their spirit of dedication. So, ladies and gentlemen, please help me thank these two wonderful ladies for all they have done in the past, and we hope will continue to do in the future for Stonebridge. Dee, and I'm sorry Lisa's not feeling well, please come forward, please come forward. That's dangerous, given Tom the mic. <laughs> I want to congratulate uh, both uh, Dee, you, and Lisa. Uh, it's obvious from the statement that uh, Kathy has given the members tonight that you, that you and Lisa certainly deserve this award. And on behalf of all the members, of Stonebridge Country Club. We want to thank you for all the hard work that you gave and for the contribution you made, which is help in our community to be the great place that it is. Okay, member comments and questions. Do we have a microphone? Mary has the microphone. Do any members have any comments or questions? Sue. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, Susan Mulligan at Middleburg. I have a question. If we're gonna to continue to have an operating staff uh, for the summer, could you explain why we were not going to be able to have um, lunch more than a few days? Sure. The um, much of the lunch business is driven by golf, <clears throat> so we're going to keep lunch open through the end of season, through the end of April, um, while the course is closed April third. But going into May and the slower months of the summer, uh, again, much, much of the lunch business is driven by golf. So um, what we decided to do was shift our focus to the evenings where people come in regardless of the activities going on at the club. So instead of being open three nights a week, we'll be open four nights a week throughout the summer. Anyone else? Way in the back, I can't even see who it is. <laughs> Thank you. 
Where do, you, where do you live again, John? Yeah, I live in Ashton Oaks. Your, your question has just been answered, okay? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, John, you have your answer. Okay, that's the answer. Any other questions or comments? Way in the back. Please give them a microphone, no matter how loud they think they are. Uh, I'm curious, as some others are here, about why a decision was made to charge golfers to walk and how you arrived at the charge. The uh, decision to charge golfers to walk was made because the financial model at Stonebridge to support the golf program is based on the fact that a large portion of the cart fee is actually used for the support of golf operations, not for lease of the golf carts. If we lost that cart revenue, to walkers by opening up walking all day, we would have lost that money and we would have had to find another way, probably increasing your dues, to cover that expense. So the board's thought, based on the recommendation of the golf committee, was that we should incorporate into a walking fee the amount of money that is the approximate amount of the cart fee of $25 that goes to supporting golf operations. Any other questions? Yes, hi, Steve Fogarty from Manchester Court. Um, first, I'd like to uh, thank and congratulate the board for all the hard work over the last year and a half as relates to the uh, revisions. I did have a question on the health club, uh, which is a key part of our, our community and our lifestyle. And I, I certainly recognize the economics that had us move past the, uh, the renovation in total of the health club. But the reality is much of that equipment in the health club is probably older than some of us users who use it. And uh, there's, one, there's one treadmill there that's, uh, or one um, elliptical there that uh, everyone seems to use. And uh, it's over 15 years old. And it literally, if it breaks, because I have one at home, if it breaks, you're not going to be able to get replacement parts for it. So my question is, uh, as we come back next year with a beautiful rest of the club, is there any way as we stay on budget and we turn up those contingencies that can ca some capital uh, can be directed towards modernizing some of the, equi some of the equipment in the health club? Because other than the Pelotons, which have been a great addition, some of that equipment and the new uh, dumbbells, the other equipment is uh, very old and it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to break and you're not going to be able to replace it. It's not, it's not so much a luxury anymore, it's almost a necessity. People are going to think you're a shill that I planted you in the audience. Right. Once, we complete, <laughs> once we complete this renovation, I believe that its success will engender a strong urge to complete what we had originally planned, which is a new community center with a fitness center and bocce courts. I believe that's what, what's going to happen. I say that knowing that I will not be on the board at that time. But I will also tell you that in order to accomplish that in the most economical way, we need to change our master declaration, which does not allow us to make assessments of members for that kind of project. We've tried to do this a number of times. Unfortunately, the master declaration can only be changed by a two-third vote of all the members, not of those voting, of all the members. So I also predict that sometime in the future, you're going to be asked to consider a vote on changing the master declaration so that instead of going to a bank to borrow money, we can do an assessment of our 799 members and come up with the funds to 
to uh, allow us to proceed with that kind of project. That would have to be adopted by a vote of the members, but it would be a vote like we took to borrow the money. It would require a majority vote. So we have to amend our documents to get there. Otherwise, our only other alternative is to borrow more money, and we really don't want to do that. Wait, wait, get the, get the mic. <laughs> The issue is going to be what happens when this equipment breaks. We can't, we can't rely on a, a new master plan whether we like it or not. Oh, no, no, I'm but sorry. The, if you're just talking about the equipment, the equipment is on a schedule for replacement, and we have reserves to replace it on the capital schedule every year. So we use our re capital reserve well, to replace that equipment. I've been here for four years, and I haven't, I haven't seen a piece of equipment other than the new cover line replaced in the last four years. Aren't, aren't all the new... Uh, treadmills, aren't they all, treadmills all new? No, I, I can't oh. like So, so with, with the anticipation of the renovation coming up over the last few years, there were pieces of equipment that were deferred in replacement. Uh, the treadmills are a good example. Versus buying new treadmills, we had actually purchased off-lease treadmills, used treadmills, to get us through that window of time in anticipation that we were going to have a new community center, a new fitness center. Now that that is not happening, we have a, a plan, which I'm actually working on with Jeff, to have uh, new equipment, not all new equipment, but the pieces that are due for replacement replaced this fall. See, that's why we keep him around. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, thank you. I consider that a, another expression of, of happiness. At this time, I'd like to introduce the new board members who will take office when we adjourn this meeting. We had an uncontested election, and uh, under the statutes, they become board members when this meeting is adjourned. So I'm going to introduce the new board members and ask them to stand. Kim Adams. <laughs> Carol Henry. And Steve Whitehead. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay. I, I will caution the three of you. You, ha you have very tough acts to follow. Big shoes to fill. And now, Bill Burnett will recognize our departing board members. Thank you. And good evening again. And welcome to the new board members. I look forward to working with you. You do not know what you got yourself into just yet. <laughs> but it all works out in the end. Dan mentioned a moment ago some of the attributes of the three people who I'm going to spend a little time recognizing. And it comes with a bittersweet approach. Uh, this is my first year on the board. I had the opportunity to work with three unbelievably dedicated, unbelievably talented, and committed board members. So it is my privilege as the secretary of the board to recognize these folks. There are five things that are the base core values oops, of uh, Stonebridge. Respect, reputation, responsibility, excellence, and communication. And on a day-to-day -day basis, much of this year, quite literally, I saw these board members exemplify that. So if I could ask Kathy Deedee to stand up, I'd like to recognize Kathy. <laughs> In Kathy's duration on the board, she has been responsible for communication, I'm sorry, tennis and fitness as the chair. This year she had legal and governance a pretty tricky issue at times. She handled it wonderfully. She had grievance. Who would want to do that? <laughs> she did it wonderfully. And then in her spare time, she took on the new member mission of creating an ad hoc committee that welcomed so many of our new members that I think has been uh, an excellent way of introducing Stonebridge to people who haven't been here before. Kathy, it is, again, bittersweet to thank you on behalf of the board, and I think I speak for the membership also to thank you for the contributions you've made to us. You'll be greatly lost, and that's a personal comment from me to you. Thank you. 
and, and please accept this token of all of our appreciation for the work that you've done. Thank you very much. The Sandy Fleming stand up. Sandy, as uh, Dan mentioned, has done this twice. Why would you do that, Sandy? I was asked. She was asked. But her energy, her enthusiasm, her knowledge has been a wonderful asset for all of us and me personally. I had a chance to work with Sandy on the Communication and IT com Committee, and she is uh, an excellent person to work with, completely dedicated, high energy, and poor thing has had her back problem for a while, and she never stops moving. This year, she had the responsibility of ensuring that the Golf and Greens Committee was ready for the renovation. No small task whatsoever. She has been on, the, on no less than six committees in her tenure on the board here at Stonebridge, which is a which is uh, beyond, well beyond the call of duty. And this year she also had the responsibility for community standards. Sandy, you have been a wonderful work, person to work with. I have enjoyed learning from you. We wish you the best and come do this again someday. <laughs> San Sandy Fleming. Please, please pass it. Pass it down. And last but not least, Uncle Dave, <laughs> the baritone in the group. Um, I didn't really know Dave, quite frankly, uh, only by reputation, but I had the distinct pleasure of working with him throughout this process for the last year. Dave has headed the uh, Finance Committee for some time. He never got me involved, which was a great thing, because my background is in sales and I had nothing, wanted nothing to do with finance, but he did an incredible job. I don't think you really realize what a wonderful job he and the rest of the Finance Committee did to put this financial package together for us so we could enjoy what we started a week ago. Dave also was on the Strategic Planning Committee, Facilities Committee in his tenure here, and again, you will be sorely lost. I had a chance to play golf the other day, and I know his golf is going to improve from, from this point onward. Dave, on behalf of the members of Stonebridge and the members of the board, thank you so much for your contributions. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you very much. And now we come to the opportunity to recognize all of our 25-year employees. There's only one. There's only one. All the pre past presidents that I have asked, when I've asked them what they missed most about being president of the board, have said it was working with Tim. When I was on the board the last time in 2015, Tim was just learning the ropes of managing without the board's hands-on approach. That approach had served us well after we took over from the developer, but it became apparent that the challenges presented in managing Stonebridge required full-time attention from a professional management team. We were lucky to have in place the right man for the job in Tim Jones. He gently encouraged us to move to a new governance model. And the prime source of that encouragement was watching how skillfully he handled the demands of the job. And over the years, his growth in those skills, his love for and his knowledge of the community, his rigorous attention to detail and attention to his own continuing education have made him, in my opinion, a premier club manager. He attends most every committee meeting, board meetings, staff meetings, and is rarely out of here before 7 p.m. Frankly, 7 p.m. is probably one of his earliest departures. His dedication is inspiring, and I think in large measure it contributes to how hard board members work, because it's tough to watch how he works and not try and measure up. And I will also say that it makes the job of president much easier, having complete confidence that Tim has things under control. 25 years is one half of Tim's life. <laughs> he, just, he just turned 50. <laughs> He's given those years to Stonebridge, and I am very grateful, and I hope you all share in that gratitude 
and we'll congratulate Tim on his 25th anniversary at Stonebridge. No means finished. <laughs> hmm? I don't know what I do with it. Let me see. I've got so many notes. This is such a challenge here. So. See if I got this. Anybody have anywhere to be? Okay. Well, no, no, no. You know what I don't have, Mary? Is my list of uh, our guests. Well, I, I'm going to do my best, okay? Because, because t Tim has um, been here for 25 years, he has made a lot of friends here. I found it, Mary. You're okay. Um, and, and probably his best friend. Because a lot of you may not know it, but Tim met his wife, Jen who was working here at Stonebridge while he was working at Stonebridge. And even that long ago, Jen was prescient enough to see the capacity and for growth in Tim. Obviously, she was prepared to be patient. And, uh, <laughs> and she has agreed to join us here tonight along with their two children, Emma and Owen. Another, um, another longtime friend, and our more senior members may remember her, but she wanted to be here tonight, Francine Cavasano. Senior. You don't have to be as senior to remember our uh, membership and communications manager, Katie Fordon. And another controller who wanted to be here tonight to join us and celebrate is Stephanie Olaf. Okay. 
And another numbers cruncher from the past, Pamela Szymanski. And finally, returning is our uh, former food and beverage director, Indra Muliana. Okay, but that's not all. Kathy Deedy is here to tell you what's coming next. So hold on to your seats. Tim, the board has kindly offered to move um, to the side to allow some special members of the community to come up and congratulate you on your uh, 25th anniversary. No one can appreciate more the tireless hours you put in and the talent you bring to the table um, than the many members, the committee members, the board, and in particular, the board presidents that have worked so hard and so closely with you. So, when a few of the former presidents heard it was your 25th anniversary, they wanted to join all of us in saying a few special words in your honor. So, Giff Brown, come on up. Bob Henry, come on up. Larry Trowell, come on up. Jim Carroll, come on up. <laughs> okay, we'll start. I think we have GIF here. I think we'll start with GIF Brown, um, President of Stonebridge Board of Directors 2016. GIF? He needs the mic. Let's see if it works. This is what we practiced. Right? Yes. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, just a few short words uh, for Tim. The board that we had in 2016 when we assembled, we had a uh, governance model that Dan reference, referenced that enabled members of the board to get themselves involved in some of the day-to-day -day functioning of what went on here at the club. And we as a board took that on as a task and we wanted to make a, a uh, change for the future in one that would be long-lasting. They'll, they'll get it down. They'll get it down in a minute. <laughs> in quite simple terms, and this is some of this stuff is kind of boring, but in this particular case, the board is responsible for governing and giving direction to the management in terms of where we're trying to go in the future. The managers and the staff are responsible for ensuring that that work gets done and they are also held accountable to make sure it's in top-notch fashion. Now, the thing about these first two, and you've heard some things tonight, uh, but 
with these two groups, the board, the committees, the staff, countless hours, things that go on behind the scenes that it, people who've never seen it can't really appreciate all that it takes to make this place work. The neat thing about this last one is that we, as members, without spending much of any time of our own, we get the luxury of enjoying everything that Stonebridge has to offer. And, and then... I said, we have an idea. We have a guy who's doing his best. Let's make it official and put him to the test. And then? <laughs> and so it was, he rose to the cause and took the helm to our members' applause. And then? And then? And then? And then? And then a long day. Talking Joe. Long and lonely. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Giff. In 2017, I became president. One of the most significant events of that year, and as I was learned every year that I'm president, was a hurricane. But I've decided to do my presentation more along the lines of a Hamilton kind of presentation. We were sitting in New Jersey when we heard them say, the storm is coming, could be any day. And then... Come on, baby. <laughs> Naples Bay was empty, a scary sight. We turned down the interstates to join the fight. And then... Our community was hurting. It looked a fright. What could we do to make it right? And, and then... then... And then, and then, and then, and then, uh, uh, and then a long tall thin Joe, slow walking Joe, slow talking Joe. All right, in, uh, in 2018, I became president, and a hurricane, that's all you had? <laughs> that's nothing. When I became president, we needed a new facilities improvement plan. Some members said, not so fast, a member vote, fast as you can. And then? Member meetings were held, both large and small explaining no project was imminent, no reason to stall. And then? New facilities would require new things. How could we buy them without taxing like kings? And then? Our resale reserve was set way too low. Let's raise it now to get more dough. But who can make all this happen? We needed to know. And then? And then? And then? And then? And then a long game job. Tall thin job. Slow walking job. Slow talking job. A long game lonely, thank you, Joe. Oh, I forgot about that. Whoop, sorry about that. Um, Carolyn can't be here, she's out of town, but we didn't want to forget Carolyn. In 2019, she became president, and she had one tremendous accomplishment. The prices came down, the reserves were available, finish half the parking lot now, the rest will be scalable. And then... And then... And then... And then... And then... And then, and then, and then, and then a long game job. Talking Joe. Long game, long me. Thank you, Joe. 
When I became board president in February of 2020, the sun was shining on Stonebridge. We just celebrated Stonebridge's 25th anniversary, and we were surveying our members about their vision for future facilities improvements. We were on top of our game. And then, <laughs> just two weeks, two weeks into our board year, Tim called me about something called COVID-19. The world was quickly turned upside down. We didn't know much about COVID-19, nobody did. But it sounded serious and we need, knew we needed to act quickly. Fortunately, Stonebridge had a superhero at the helm and he had a plan. And then along came Jones. And then, and then, and then along came Jones. Talking Jones. Slow walking Jones. Slow talking Jones. Along came Lonely. Thank you, Jones. Tim and staff acted quickly to wind down virtually all the club amenities golf, tennis, food service, social events in the middle of peak season, no less, to protect our members and our staff. And there was a financial impact, too, and we feared it would be significant. And then... Oh, and then... <laughs> Sorry. Back one. Back one. Back one. Tim proceeded to construct what felt like a bubble around Stonebridge. It was an imaginary bubble, much like an imaginary friend. But that bubble helped us feel safe from the craziness outside the gate. World, please don't pop our bubble, we pleaded. And, and then... then... <laughs> Tim's steady, and I might point out well-washed hands, led the Stonebridge team as we closely followed CDC guidelines. Clean, clean, and clean again. And because the COVID tests were difficult to find, some members tried less traditional COVID testing. By all reports, members seemed, members seemed to prefer this home, home COVID test over the more traditional protocol, which involves sticking a sharp stick up your nose. <laughs> and then... And then... As the quarantine continued, Tim and his team found innovative ways to keep members engaged. Weekly on-site farmer and fish markets, walking golf, single rider golf, no touch golf, a Zoom magic show and a Zoom trivia show, takeout meals and home delivery meals delivered by the golf cart crew. And then, and then, and then. Tim, Tim even resorted to selling pandemic essentials at the club front door. <laughs> Clearly, 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 Tim was willing to try any idea. And then, yep, almost. Always the leader, Tim never forgot our club staff. He worked tirelessly and successfully to qualify the club for financial assistance that kept our great staff employed and busy throughout the pandemic and kept our association financially strong and stable. And then... And then... As the pandemic continued, members looked forward to two, to, to two highlights of each day of quarantine. First, reading the latest edition of one of Tim's more than 135 health updates. <laughs> and second, listening for the sound of the mail delivery truck making its much anticipated daily rounds. And then, with Tim at the helm, we eventually emerged from the shadows of the pandemic. We're now back in the sunshine where we belong and building our bright future. So thank you, Tim, for guiding us through this unprecedented time and back into the sunshine. And then, 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 and then a long game done. Oh, 
broken jaw. A lonely, lonely, broken jaw. Mr. Carroll has asked for musical. None of your business. <laughs> Two times a president. Come on. This could be painful. Dan missed the last rehearsal, so that's the first thing I have to you tell you. Oh, yeah, Larry, we had rehearsals. Uh, smoke them if you got them. All right, let's start the way we planned it. You ready? Uh, ooh, ah, uh, ooh, there you go. You can all join in if you like. Ah, uh, ooh, ah. Uh. When I became the president, I knew what I should do. Mm. Fix the greens, move some water, make the golf course play like new. Expand the bistro, upgrade the pool. Top off the gym and add bocce too. <laughs> That's for Dan. It sounded great, or so I thought, but others said, you better, you better not. <laughs> and then they wrote me nasty letters. <laughs> and they circulated petitions, too. <laughs> and they even testified against our perfect plan. <laughs> and, and Joe? And Everybody. And then a long day, Joe. Talking, Joe. Take it slow, walking, Joe. Slow talking, Joe. A long came lonely, thanking, Joe. A long came long, cool, Timothy Jones. It's, it's, a, it's a tough act to follow. So Jim Carroll said, Dan, here you go. We've got the plan. We've got the dough. And we did. Man. Thirteen million is all you'll need. Now get this done and go with speed. And and man. Man. We're sorry, sir, the builder said. You'll need nine million more instead. The world has changed in many ways. Big changes aren't as cheap these days. And then? Without a new plan to present instead, I thought these projects were stone cold dead. Sure, we're offering less for more. They'll understand, they've been to the store. And then? No problem, Mr. President, our GM said. Here's a plan to present instead. Sure, we're offering less for more. They'll understand. They've been to the store. And then, and then, and then, and then, uh, uh, and then a long day, Joe. Talking, Joe. Slow walking, Joe. Slow talking, Joe. So, so you would think after being here 25 years, you all would know I don't like to be the center of attention. So, thank you. We're not finished, although, although I, I'm not sure exactly where we are on the uh, agenda, if you will. I think it's Joe, isn't it? Yes, Joe Foster has a few words, and Joe Foster also knows how to work this microphone. <laughs> wow, great turnout. How can I follow that? That was, a, that was fantastic. That was fun, too, putting that together. Mrs. Didi, thank you. Uh, I'm proud to stand up here and say a few words about Tim and his leadership on behalf of all of the staff. And uh, wow, 25 years. 
That's simply unprecedented in this business. It really is. Congratulations for this major accomplishment. How did it happen? It wasn't by accident. It's called leadership. There are many characteristics of a great leader, and I'm certain many of you have, and I've worked for my fair share of good and bad leaders. If I had to rank them in order, Tim Jones will be at the top of my list. As a high-level leader, there are many sayings that come to mind. It's lonely at the top. <laughs> Heavy is the head that wears the crown. And my personal favorite, when you are the leader, everything is your fault. <laughs> but really what that means is that you're responsible for everything. But you often get grief and rarely get the praise that you deserve for your many responsibilities. Ironically, that is one of the biggest attributes of a great leader. The fact that they do not need to have constant praise and they can handle the criticism. It comes with a very strong EQ or emotional intelligence. Here are 10 characteristics of Tim Jones that just happen to be 10 characteristics, characteristics of great leaders. Uh, number one is integrity. Integrity is an essential leadership trait for the individual and the organization. It is especially important for top level executives who are charting the organization's course and making countless other significant decisions. Integrity is simply doing the right thing even when no one is looking. Tim has integrity running through his veins. And then? <laughs> Number two is delegation. Delegation is one of the core responsibilities of a leader, but it can be tricky to delegate effectively. The goal isn't just to free yourself up. We, know, we all know that Tim has so much time. It's also to enable your direct reports to grow, facilitate teamwork, provide autonomy, and lead to better decision making. As a direct report, I can say that Tim delegates very well, in a very good way. And then communication. Effective leadership and effective communication are intertwined. The best leaders are skilled communicators who are able to communicate in a variety of ways, from transmitting information to inspiring others to coaching direct reports. And you must be able to listen to and communicate with a wide range of people across roles, committees, social identities, and more. If you've been a member or staff for any amount of time, you know how well Tim communicates to the community. That communication is also reflected with the staff. Self-awareness is number four. While this is a more inwardly focused trait, self-awareness and humility are paramount for leadership. The better you understand yourself and recognize your own strengths and weaknesses, the more effective you can be as a leader. To me, this is one of any leader's most important qualities. Tim has no ego when it comes to his leadership. That is very important to the staff. When, you're the top, when your top leader is not afraid to admit that they made a mistake or don't always say that they know the answers, people are happy to follow. Number five is accountability. Taking ownership of responsibilities and positive and negative outcomes is key to effective leadership. Leaders should be able to take responsibility for their team's work as well as their own. This may involve apologizing for mistakes and developing new systems and processes to avoid errors in the future. Tim is quick to take the blame when things go right and quick to give praise away, I'm sorry, when things go wrong <laughs> and give the praise away when things go right. <laughs> Number six is Active, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't on purpose. <laughs> Active listening is number six. Successful leaders should be able to give but also receive feedback from 10, 10 team members and listen. To actively listen, a leader can listen to the words being spoken but also understand the meanings behind them. Tim is always available. In fact, we have an open door policy at Stonebridge led by Tim. Number seven is courage. Effective leaders should have the courage to do what is in the best interest of the team and the company at all times. There are many times when leaders need to make unpopular or difficult decisions. So having courage can help them accept the difficulty of their role and make necessary decisions with confidence. Tim always makes the right decision based on his current knowledge of the situation. Although it is not his favorite thing to do, Tim always has the courage to make the awkward phone call. <laughs> Got a bunch today. Number eight is patience. Effective leaders know that mistakes, miscommunications, and failures are part of the workplace, and that having patience can help their team overcome workplace errors. 
Patience involves understanding that mistakes can happen, accepting mistakes when they happen, and focusing your efforts on staying productive. Tim does not get angry or blame others when things go wrong. He very calmly and patiently offers his expertise on how to correct the situation and correct the situation to where hopefully it will not happen again. But then even if it does, he still has the patience to deal with it in the same consistent way. Number nine is respect. Effective leaders treat their teams with respect, which can help them gain respect in return. They value feedback and they want to hear the opinions of their teammates. Effective leaders show their respect by empowering their employees to make decisions and to use their expertise to achieve goals. Showing respect builds their sense of worth and commitment to the organization. Tim has the utmost respect for members and staff alike. That is why he is very respected as well. And number 10 is optimism. Optimistic leaders show that they believe that their company is working toward a better future. They value their team members' contributions to achieve that goal. Effective leaders often plan ahead and maintain a positive outlook through changes and transitions. Being positive during stressful or adverse situations can help your team manage difficulties effectively. Tim has always said that he is the eternal optimist. This could be his strongest trait. He pushes forward through every issue without the semblance of worry or doubt. He may have it inside him, but he does not show it. The roller coaster nature of the current renovations could not explain this optimism any better. You hear the word culture a lot in business. We've heard it today. We all know the definition. Most companies and organizations fail to achieve the culture that they're trying to find. Stonebridge not only has the best governance of any club that I've worked for, it also has an amazing company culture for the staff, one that is enviable to other clubs. That is not by mistake. There are many people involved to create this type of culture in an organization, but one thing is always true. The leader at the top sets the example for all. Tim, I would like to personally express my appreciation, admiration, friendship, camaraderie, collaboration, and the real pleasure that has been working as your right hand for over a year now. I hope for many more years to come. So even though heavy is the head that wears the crown, you wear it well. On behalf of the staff, we would like to present you And then the pennant. That's not where it should be. It's in my office. <laughs> I, will, I will say, Tim, this was very difficult to put this together for him. This guy's ominous. Everywhere you go, Tim's around the corner. And he knows we're talking about him, you know? <laughs> anyway, we have a pennant to present, but we also have a staff video. Uh, we have a small video of what it means, what the staff, what Tim means to the staff. Uh, after the video, Mr. Graziano has one small order of business to adjourn the meeting. And then we hope that you'll join us in the bar for a cocktail hour and some appetizers. Uh, so can we cue the video? Guys over at Harmon's. <laughs> Anniversary, Tim. It's been great working with you for the seven seasons I've been here. Always makes me feel grateful. Tim, thank you so much for always being so supportive for all of us. He's an industrious general manager. The support you show your team. Tim, congratulations. Thank you for being a positive leader and role model. I wish you the best for years to come. Hello, Stonebridge, and uh, greetings from uh, Gaston, Alabama. This is Ben Owell, your uh, past clubhouse manager. Miss you all. Hope you're well. Uh, man, just wanted to jump on and say congratulations, Tim Jones, on 25 years at Stonebridge Country Club. What a uh, monumental achievement in our industry. Uh, proud of you, Tim. Proud to say that I uh, got to work under you for a number of years. You're the best boss, best general manager, uh, best man I ever worked for. So congrats on all your success and uh, many years of continued success to you. Uh, say hi to Jen and the kids for me. We miss you guys. Take care. Bye. What is it about Tim? He's an awesome guy. Thanks for hiring me. Happy anniversary, Tim. Thanks for having me. You're a great guy. Tim is a great boss. Uh, he makes it a, a pleasure here to work with everyone. And uh, 
we share the same name, so that makes him cool in my opinion. He's really genuine, and you can always trust that he's got Stonebridge's best interest at heart. Thank you, Tim, for all those amazing years working with you. Happy anniversary to you. We enjoy working here. Thank you. And uh, you've made it a great family, and uh, the continuity and longevity of all the, the employees and, and everything has been wonderful. Thank you. Hey, Tim, what's going on? Heard it's 25 years. I've worked with you for five. Hopefully, it's another 25. Thanks, Tim. Happy anniversary. Um, I think Tim is outstanding. He helps out all of his employees and he makes it a joy to work here. And I appreciate everything he's done for us as a team. Hey, hey Tim, um, first of all, I want to say happy 25th and thanks for giving me the opportunity to be on your team. It's been a pleasure. Tim, thanks for being a great leader and uh, the governance of this club has been better than I ever have experienced anywhere else. I really appreciate that Tim is the eternal optimist. He really encourages us all to see things as a glass half full and that is really appreciated. No one bleeds Stonebridge blood like Tim Jones. He exemplifies 212. Tim is very friendly. Treats us all like family. What can I say about Tim Jones? He's very welcoming and kind. His supportive leadership. The kindness and compassion that Tim shows to the entire team, it doesn't go unnoticed. And we're grateful to have him. Congratulations, Tim, and happy 25th. Thank, Thank you, Tim. Tim. Okay. So this is the staff's presentation. Yeah. It's a it's a flag that's signed by all the staff. And before, we, before I call for a motion to adjourn, I think it would be most appropriate if we have this superhuman we've talked about come up and say a few words. Tim? I don't know what to say after all that, honestly. Uh, it should rhyme. It should, it should rhyme. And it should flow with an and then, but I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. No, I mean, I just have to thank everybody, the staff, everybody. I mean, I've been here for 25, reason, 25 years for a reason, so thank you. Jim Hole, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Kathy Taylor, second. All in favor, say aye. aye. The bar is open. <laughs> that, was, that was something else. <laughs> I guess you wonder where.